Hey guys, all right, it's finally time to change the oil on my rear end on my 2014 Ram Laramie. This is 30,000 miles on the on this rear end. And uh, they recommend every 30,000 miles that you towed a lot of police duty and all that. It's overkill, I know. My son's got a uh, hand-me-down to 2002 Yukon. It's got almost 300,000 miles on it and has never had the rear end oil change. <laughs> and it's whisper quiet. It's amazing. I've got a few things I just wanted to show you real quick before we get into it. Uh, I bought a new gasket. 45 bucks for that puppy. About to fall off my chair here. Uh, 45 bucks for that thing. I don't see any gold on it, but damn. Uh, I wanted to have it handy. Some people reuse them. I guess you could, uh, but I wanted to have one here. You know, I'm doing this over the weekend, and uh, I don't want to take. I don't want to have to wait till Monday to go get a damn gasket. Uh, I've got some uh, Mopar 7585. They specifically say in the manual, do not use friction modifier. This is a limited slip rear end. Uh, if you're in doubt, you you call a call or go over there when you pick your stuff up and give them your VIN number and they'll tell you whether you what what, what kind of oil you need. And I got five quarts. I should have uh, probably almost a quart left over. Maybe I'm not sure. Um, I've got a few other little gizmos that I've never used before. Uh, ever since I had my first car when I was 15 years old, uh, the way I changed my rear axle oil, and I've done it ever since then, is just cut it right here and squeeze it in. But today, in this modern world, we got all kind of little gizmos we can use. A little pump, might try that. A little doohickey here. I'm tempted to go with this, maybe go with that method, I don't know, because they've got some really, I don't understand why they do those kind of things, but Ram's got, in that uh, DVD manual, they've got some of the squirreliest stuff you've ever seen in your life in there, just one contradiction after another. And one thing they tell you, what I was getting ready to say is I may use this as kind of a dipstick because every rear end axle oil I've ever changed in my life is fill it till it comes out the hole, put the plug on it and you, you're done, done deal, finished. On this thing they say, fill it within a quarter of an inch of the bottom of the fill hole plus or minus a quarter of an inch. Does that make any sense at all? That means you can fill it till it comes out the hole. But then they've got a fill line quite a ways down below that. So that doesn't add up. And I'm going to do a little bit more investigating on that. But anyway, I've got some lint-free cloth. They do call for lint-free cloth, and I've got some right here to wipe everything down with. It was right under my nose all the time. I went to O'Reilly's, I went to Pep Boys, I went to AutoZone, and it was right there in my top drawer. <laughs> uh, everything's 13 uh, millimeter. Gonna need a deep well though, because they've got all of that ABS equipment and uh, anti-slip stuff tied, uh, bolted to the bonnet bolts. They're using the same bolts, and they're just using longer bolts. bolts. So it's, it's a little congested in there, doing it this way. Uh, but I've also, I also picked up a crow's foot uh, so that when we uh, go back, I can reach in behind that stabilizer bar and, and uh, torque it. I'm going to try to torque every, every bolt on it. going to try to do this the right way. And uh, well, I don't know about the right way, but the way the manual says to do it. Uh, so that's uh, 
that's about it, guys. We got everything we need right here. All we need to do is just quit yapping and go do it. So let's do that. And uh, we'll set up some lights up under this truck and crawl under there and dive into it. Okay. Amazing what a little leverage will do for you. So what we're going to do is just take a tie wrap. And I'm going to tie wrap this thing to this uh, stabilizer bar where it's up out of our way like that, okay? And then now this all becomes a non-issue. I'm going to put all my stuff in here. My wife bought me this nice little Craftsman magnetic. And boy, is it magnetic. It catches everything. But if she comes out here and sees me not using it, she might get pissed. Let's break these loose. And this has a rubber gasket. I just want to get them started. They're tight. They must have Loctite on them. Take a look at this thing while we got it here. You can see it when I put my finger in here. You can see it's got some some crop there. I don't know what that is. We'll find out in a little while. But we're going to go ahead and take it outside, all of this outside, and clean it off. Here's a gasket. I don't know why you re couldn't reuse this gasket, except that I just don't want to take a chance on having to. Uh, have a leak somewhere and then having to do this all over again, so. Okay guys, just to kind of give you an idea of what the old stuff looked like. I bet this is the smallest Dixie cup you've ever seen. When you get old, you don't drink as much. Yeah, you know, it's, it's pretty nasty really. I mean, not bad, but. I think it's. That's 30,000 miles, a little bit more than 30,000 miles. Sometimes some of the simplest things can turn out, turn out to be a real cluster. And that's like getting this red Loctite off of these bolts. I've got all of these done here. So I've done all of these. The goal is to get them to where they'll just run right on there pretty easy. So what I've been doing is I've been soaking them in. I soaked them in some in that acetone, and I'll use my my uh, little three eighths impact wrench to uh, to run them down, and and it'll loosen up this crap. But I guess my point is a nut on it is about the easiest way. The wire brush method does not work well. If somebody's got a better method, I'd love to know. Uh, but this seems to, you know, you don't have all day to do this. Brake clean and acetone is about the same. So you'll run right up by hand now. And that's what we want. Okay, so we got our lint-free cloth here. Like we really need it. Oh, let's see what we got in here. Not much of nothing but oil. But we're gonna go ahead and reach back there as far as we can. That's a horse of a rear end right there, guys. It looks good though. Uh, I'm just going to keep cleaning a little bit more on it and then go ahead and start putting it together. So what we're going to do now is just pin it up there, just hang it rather, with the new gasket and everything. And then we'll worry about uh, the Loctite and all that business. Okay. So, star pattern. 15 pounds. 
Okay. Wow, that's scary. Let's go over here and put a little bit here. That's 25. Now the key to doing it with a crow's foot is you need to be 90 degrees. Because if you do it like this, you're adding to your length of your arm. And see we've got a long dark arm right there, so we need to be right there to get our torque. And there it is. Let's talk about torque. I was struggling to get 25 foot-pounds on that thing. Even though I'm an old man, I can still pull 25 foot-pounds fairly easily. But those bolts were tight. Uh, don't let your torque wrench replace your common sense when you putting these things on because uh, you get in trouble that way. I did once. Cost me about three hundred dollars. And uh, you know, torque wrenches are great, but they're not foolproof. And these bolts, you know, these are used bolts. They were put on at the factory at thirty foot pounds with red Loctite. So you know, coming off, we don't know whether they stretched. Uh, to me, you probably should replace the bolts that have been torqued to the max like that with the red Loctite. But nonetheless, uh, there's charts all over the place. And uh, our service manual calls for 30 foot-pounds. The dealer says 29 foot-pounds. It's kind of a coincidence that this chart has 29 foot-pounds max on a grade 12.9. But a 10.9... According to some charts, yeah, no problem, 30. I say no problem, that's the maximum. Uh, this chart, 24 foot-pounds, a little closer to where I'm at. I think 30 foot-pounds is aggressive, too aggressive uh, for, uh, you know, putting putting a gasket, a rubber gasket on a, on a flange. But let's look at this next one. Okay, on this one, a 10.9 gray bolt is 26 foot-pounds maximum torque. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's, all, it's all over the place. Uh, the manual says 30. The dealer says 29. Various manuals across the Internet say different things. So, but I think one conclusion you can draw from this is that 30 is aggressive. And I, I personally won't, I'm not going past 25 on mine because I don't feel comfortable. And the last thing I'm going to do is break off a bolt and have to fight that under there. That could be a nightmare. And um, so just a word of caution about talking things. There's a lot of stories on the Internet on these forums. You can Google them about the American axle and the 30 foot-pounds. People are ringing off the, the, the bolts, coming and going back on. So just be careful, guys. I'm not going to go to 30 on this. I just don't really don't feel comfortable with 30 foot-pounds. I know people are doing it, uh, I'm sure, but I just... Um, uh, I think 25 is just going to be fine for me. So use your own judgment. It's just a warning as a word of caution. Now all we got to do is put our uh, 
brake line stuff back together and then we'll put some oil in this puppy. We're done with this. There you go. Put everything back like it's supposed to go. Okay, this one. Goes right in here. I don't think that's going away. Let me check it. So, put that right there. Start pumping. I decided to go with the little pump. It works perfect. Only takes a couple of minutes just to pump down a quart. And I highly recommend using that. It gets you behind that stabilizer bar also without much trouble. Definitely see the oil. Me being the perfectionist that I am, I would like to get it perfect. And I will eventually. All right, so we put um, three quarts and 17 ounces, what we put in. All right, so I made this little dipstick here, right here. We should have about uh, it looks like about what? That's well, that's three quarters of an inch. If you measured that, I would call that a half inch below the hole. So we'll call it good. Drive it around, come back and check it. Okay, there it is, 24 foot pounds. All right guys, lessons learned. First lesson is nobody knows where the hell the fill level should be at on these things. But it says fluid level right here. So that's what I went by. I filled it to a quarter of an inch above the line. I just came back from filling up my truck. I put the, the uh, it's 84 right now, but it was about 80, 88 or so when I, when I checked it. And it was still about the exact same spot, a quarter of an inch above the fill line. That's where I filled it to a quarter of an inch above the fill line. I used my little torque wrench, which I'll be, uh, selling on the internet for $49.99. And yes, those are perfect right angles. Um, so, that's about it, guys. The other thing is the, uh, and it's a big thing, is the torque on these nuts. I think it's too much. And I, I, I generally, generally like to go by exactly what the manufacturer says you you probably know that uh, about me if you've seen some some of my videos but I got to tell you uh, that there's just too many numbers floating around on these things and I've read too many threads of people shearing them off and breaking them off and if you look at the manual it tells you 30 foot pounds the dealers documentation says 29 foot pounds I looked up charts on the internet. These are M8 bolts. That's a 13 millimeter head. It's a 3 8 inch, roughly, uh, thread, which is M8. And it's 10.9, which is the metallurgy, which is the strength of the bolt. And I saw values from uh, 26 foot pounds on up to uh, 29 foot pounds. 
So that's on a new dry bolt. Uh, when I got to 25, I got real nervous, but I felt like 20, 25 foot pounds was way more than necessary here. I, I've, I've wrung, wrung so many things off in my life. I've just gotten uh, nervous about it. And I would hate to have to drill and uh, drill one of these little bitty things out in this position and get an easy out in there. That, that would be really a nightmare with this stabilizer bar and this track bar. You'd have to take that off to get a straight drill if they were, if they were one that was sheared off. And of course you know it would be. It would be this one up here where you'd have to drop your spare tire and you'd have to get in here and, uh, you know, that's, that's, what, that, that's Murphy's Law. That's the, way, that's the way life goes. You know, it wouldn't be this one, this bottom one. You wouldn't, you wouldn't get that lucky. All right, this is going to conclude our operation on changing the oil today in the rear differential on a 2014 2500 Ram. It's not a bad job. It'd be easier if we didn't have that track bar and that stabilizer bar in the way, and that can be, be removed fairly easily if you prefer to do it that way. But anyway, I appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Adios.